Hey everybody, welcome. This should be a pretty quick video about function templates. This is how we can basically make a general function to work with various types. Many of you will probably be familiar with the template concept from other programming languages known as generics. So we are doing generic programming here where we're not associating our code to specific types. So in our code currently, we have some overloading for this print collection function. And this is the main functionality here but this is currently typed to a string array where we pass in the size. What I wanna do for demonstration purposes is scoot this code down because I wanna keep those functions and we're just going to create some variations. Let's say void print and I'll leave off the collection just so we can have those variations as well. And we are going to define it pretty similar in structure like that. But the main difference is above the function, we are going to have the keyword template and then in angle brackets, less than or greater than, we will say type name T. Basically what this is saying is, hey, we have some type we will call T. And the reason we call it T is because it kind of makes sense for the word type. We can call it whatever we want, but we have some random letter or word here because we cannot say something specific. We have to keep this very general. If this is your first time doing anything like this, it can be a little confusing. So don't mind it if you have to watch this video a couple of times. Now, when we define the parameters, we will, instead of using a specific type, use T. So this is of some type, we don't know what type it is, and we will call that variable collection. And we're going to have an int size because I'm expecting this to be used for an array, but you can also do overloading with templates. So you could basically make a print function that could work with everything if you wanted but we're just going to start with the basics here. Now, everything else is pretty much going to be the same. So we will go ahead and write that code out for int i zero, i is less than size, i plus plus, c out, and we can use that collection variable just like usual. And this indexing syntax works for arrays, vectors, and the STL or standard library arrays. So we will go ahead and use that and expect it to work. Now the interesting thing here is you might be wondering if we're making this general function and we invoke it but pass it something that doesn't work in this way. How's it going to know that? Are we going to run it and it just crashes? Well, this is all going to be caught at compile time. You see, what we're doing now is we're not actually creating a function. We're creating a template for a function. At compile time, it's going to analyze all of our calls to this general function and generate the appropriate function signatures to match those different types. If there's an invalid mismatch for types or we're trying to do something that doesn't work, with the data we're passing it, it's going to know at compile time. So we don't have to worry about potential runtime errors, and we don't have to worry about creating a function that is going to work in every possible scenario because we don't have to worry about running that code with incompatibilities. We will always figure that out at compile time. And I'll show you an example of that. First, let's talk about how we use this function. I need to work on my posture, man. I'm like, ooh. All right, from now on, I am sitting up straight. If you're enjoying this content, but you're developing in Visual Studio, then I really recommend you check out the sponsor of this video, Visual Assist, a plugin for Visual Studio that's going to increase the ability to develop C++ in Visual Studio. So for an enhanced experience, a bunch of added features and improvements with the IntelliSense, check that out. I'll drop a link to a free trial down below. So we have the function. Let's try to invoke this function. We will go down to our calling code we have these other print collections for the other functions. I'm just going to comment these out briefly. And we will try to invoke a new one. So print, and what are we gonna pass in? Foods one and the size five. Hit run. And that works. Now you can invoke this function using other types because we can often easily convert to an array. So for example, you could say foods.data and passing in nothing for that, but also the size, so foods2.size. This should work as well. And actually, if you watched the previous video real quick, I'm trying not to get too distracted, but you could of course 
when you had these overloads for print collection, these two were kind of a convenience because you could convert the standard namespace array to an old school array when you invoke the function using foods.data. Same thing for the vector. So these functions are not really needed, they are just an added convenience. But anyways, back to what we were saying, we can invoke print passing in this type, which is also an array, and we get the int, so this is going to work. This doesn't actually show us anything useful though, because what I wanna be able to do is pass in foods to, and you can see in this scenario, it works. There we go. We're passing in a type that is not an array, and this function still works. If we tried to do the same with this print collection, it's not going to work, because this is expecting only a string array. So to prove that to you, if we invoke this by saying print collection, that one works, and print collection, this one does not work. You're gonna have a type problem. No matching function for call to print collection. So that's where the template functions come in handy. They allow us to pass in more than just one type. Now, let's do the same thing with the vector just to finish this off. So we'll say foods3 and foods3.size. But what if we wanted to be able to say foods2 like so? Since this is a standard library array, it should have the size attached to the object. Why would we need to pass it in as a separate argument here? It's not very user friendly. Same thing for a vector. If we went ahead and said, print foods three, this should work. By should work, I mean it would make sense for this to work. So let's go ahead and implement this by creating a template function overload. Scrolling up to the top where we defined print, we can create another function here, void print, and in this one, we can have it so it does not require the size. And we can say t collection, and we will basically use the same exact code you can copy and paste it, or you could just invoke the other version. So that's what we'll do. We'll say print passing in collection and collection dot size. We're getting one error, and that is because I forgot this template type name T at the top, so make sure you put that. Perfect. Now we shouldn't get an error there, and our calling code should remove that error. Cool, so now we have an overload that'll take just a single argument, which is the collection, and you can see that works. Now we're getting a bunch of prints because we have five of them here. So at this point, since we have these two versions, you're not going to need to use these two at all. What if you try to use an incompatible type? For example, in this function, we are using collection.size. Well, dot size doesn't exist on all types. For example, it doesn't exist on classic old school arrays. You would have to have that size passed in as a separate argument. What that means is if we tried to invoke print, but passed in foods one, and we did not use a size, you can see we get an error at compiling. Taking a look, and the error is kind of complex, but it's complaining about a pointer. As you remember from what I've said in previous videos, the basic arrays decay to pointers. So it's not even going to let us run this code. Another example would be if we passed in not a collection, but let's say a string, hello, and we run now, similarly going to get an error. And let's try one more type just to confirm this idea. Let's go ahead and pass in a double, so we'll say 50.5. Hit run. And again, it's just complaining about that type. So we don't have to worry about any weird runtime errors or exceptions being thrown because it's not able to generate a correct function using this template based on the data we passed in. And that's because the dot size doesn't exist on a double variable. So hopefully this has been a good introduction to templatized functions. This is extremely handy. You're probably gonna run into this a lot and you'll probably see more complex versions as well. So make sure you understand this at least a bit and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to be talking about a new data structure called a deck. This is pretty interesting if you're trying to create a stack or a queue, which we're going to talk about those data structures as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.